Let us pray. Lord, thank you for your compassion, which brings you to our world of pain and dismay. Give us faith to overcome our doubts and help us to believe that all things are possible with you. In Christ Jesus' name, and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. It's amazing, really, how quickly the world moves on. Your entire life can be crumbling in around you. Your whole world screeching to a complete halt. And yet, when you look around, what you'll find is a world full of people going on with their daily life. Unfazed, unmoved, unbothered by what's happening to you. And not only will you see them carrying on with their daily lives, sometimes you'll even see them fighting amongst themselves. This is the interesting part, is is that they will fight amongst themselves, oftentimes fighting over possible solutions for you and your problems. Your world, as you know it, could be coming to an end, and the world around you doesn't seem to care. And really, that is the case of the father in our story this morning. This father that St. Mark depicts for us this morning, St. Mark paints for us a father who is going through a living hell as he watches his son suffer at the hand of this demon. There isn't a parent alive who would want to trade places with this father. What this father experiences is more than any of us could even imagine. It is a living nightmare, and I can only imagine with each convulsion, with every epileptic episode that this demon sends his son and him crying out to God, oh God, how long? How long must my son suffer? How long must I suffer? How long, oh God, will you wait? Until you answer me, how long, oh God, will this continue? It pains us truly if we were to put ourselves in the sandals of this father and consider it. Our son, our dear child, whom we love, growing up in this torture, growing up with this as a childhood, this torment. Healing and treating his wounds from the fire. Healing and treating his wounds from the water. Healing and treating his wounds from the ground as this demon throws him down time and time again. There is no greater suffering for a parent than to helplessly watch their child suffer. And that is the world that this father lives in. That is the reality that this father wakes up to every single day. And what is the world around him doing? Arguing. They're arguing. In fact, if you have your Bible, I encourage you to open it to Mark chapter 9. If not, please follow along in your your bulletin there. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. And when they came upon the disciples, they saw a great crowd around them, and the scribes arguing with them. And immediately all the crowd, when they saw him, were greatly amazed and ran up to him and greeting him. And he asked them, what are you arguing about with them? And someone from the crowd answered him, teacher, I brought my son to you, for he has a spirit that makes him mute. And whenever it seizes him, it throws him down, and he foams and grinds his teeth and becomes rigid. So I asked your disciples to cast it out, and they were not able. This father's world is crashing in around him, and the rest of the world is busy doing what? They're busy arguing. And not only are they arguing, but they're arguing about the possible solutions to this man's problem. Like the Father, they are completely and utterly useless. They have done nothing to save this boy. They have done nothing to help this man. 
And in fact, their failed attempts just add to it. I can imagine with every convulsion, with every passing moment, this father has to watch his son suffer. I can only imagine the desperation just growing. But then Jesus shows up. Thanks be to God that Jesus shows up. Let us all pray that Jesus shows up. Because Jesus shows up and three times he asks a question. Three times he asks a question. He asks the question, how long? First, he addresses it to his disciples and the crowd around him. He says to them in verse 19, and he answered them, O faithless generation, how long am I to be with you? How long am I to bear with you? Bring him to me. How long? How long will you place your hope in the wrong thing? How long do I have left to teach you? How long will it take before you begin to see the reality in front of you. How long? Jesus looks at them and he asks, oh faithless generation, how much longer will you continue to seek deliverance in the wrong places? In the wrong things? In the wrong ways? And then again he asks, a third time he asks this question, how long? But this time he directs it to the Father. In fact, as the, the boy is brought to him, the, the demon sends the boy into a convulsion. And, and Jesus looks at the father as this is happening. And he says to the father, how long has this been happening to you? What's so profound about this story, really, isn't the fact that this boy is being affected, that this boy is suffering, that the father is suffering. What is profound about this story is that Jesus is the one who asks how long. You see, what's interesting is human nature would leave us to think that it would be the father, the father of the one suffering who is crying out, how long, oh God? How long must this continue? How long will we suffer? How long until you answer? That's our question, isn't it? When we're suffering, when we're hurting, and yet that's not the question of the Father. It's the question that rolls off the lips of God. It's Jesus' question. How long? Jesus asks how long in order to direct their attention to the answer, in order to point them to himself, Jesus is the answer to how long. Jesus is the answer to your suffering. This father in desperation, as his world is crushing in around him, sought healing from the world, sought healing in that did nothing more, sought healing from a group of people that just sat there and argued about solutions debated amongst themselves of what was the best thing they could do in the midst of this boy's suffering. And the disciples, the disciples, those who were to deliver God's word, those who were to deliver the healing of Jesus, those who were supposed to heal him and bring refuge, well, they failed. They sought to heal in their own power, in their own strength, by their own ability, they sought to heal. They sought the solution in themselves rather than in the Lord. And and the reality is, how often do we not do the same? How often are we not just like this father and just like these disciples? How often do we not seek hope and assurance and deliverance and help and security from people, from this world, from those who do nothing more than argue about the situations that are controlling our lives? And how often do we not get so wrapped up in everybody else's stuff, thinking that our opinion 
our wisdom, our guidance, our strength, our ability, our whatever you want to say, can actually bring deliverance from the demons controlling that person's life. Thinking that our opinion really is the only one that matters. How often are we not just like this father and just like these disciples? Completely and utterly helpless. Asking the wrong questions and seeking the wrong solution. Only for Jesus to show up. And thanks be to God that Jesus shows up. Only for Jesus to show up and turn our world upside down. Only for Jesus to show up and remind us how long it's been that we have been doing these things and seeking these things. How long it's been that we have been suffering. How long it's been that we have been affected by these problems. And then showing us that he is the solution to those problems. Only for Jesus to show up and for this beautiful, beautiful story to continue to unfold. As we hear in the word of the Lord. And he said from childhood. And it often cast him into fire and into water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said to him, if you can, all things are possible for the one who believes. Immediately the father cried, the child cried out and said, I believe, help my unbelief. And when Jesus saw that a crowd came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, you mute and deaf spirit, I command you, come out of him. And never enter him again. And after crying out and convulsing him terribly, it came out, and the boy was like a corpse, so that most of them said, he is dead. But Jesus, Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. This desperate father looks at Jesus and says, If you can have compassion, if you can have compassion on us. Let me tell you, dear brother and sister in Christ, Jesus is the only one who has compassion. In fact, in the entire New Testament, this word, compassion, is only used to describe the actions of Jesus. Jesus alone has compassion. Even when our eyes fail to see it, on our darkest days, when we want to believe that God is good and yet our unbelief keeps screaming in our ears, Jesus has compassion. When we are walking in the valley of the shadow of death, Jesus has compassion. When we do not understand and there is no answer in sight, Jesus has compassion. When we are confronted with the question of how long And there is no end to our suffering. Jesus has compassion. When we believe and yet God help our unbelief is the plea that is drawn from our lips. Jesus has compassion. And that compassion drives him to your pain. That compassion drives him to your cross. That compassion drives him to your death and to your grave where he dies in your place and is buried in your stead so that he can look at you just as he does this boy when all said he is dead so that Jesus can look at you, reach down, grab you by the hand and raise you up. Raise you up on that last day where his kingdom will have no end. On that day, when the question how long will never be asked again. On that day, when suffering will be no more, and pain will be no more, and this sorrow will be no more. On that day, when Jesus looks at you and lifts you up and says, you will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So look to Jesus my dear friend. Look to Jesus when times are good. Look to Jesus when times are bad. Look to Jesus in the midst of your darkest despair and in the hour of your glory. Look to Jesus because Jesus is Lord of it all. 
He is the one who commands the demons. He is the one who drives out the fears. He is the answer to how long. He is the one who looks at you and says, you are mine, a child of God. You are forgiven, you are loved, and you are his. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.